Yeah. First question is, yeah. is the maximum air pressure that can keep in a cylinder is 200 bar. Now, yes. Uh, what is the optimal optimal air pressure that you keep where you can see previously before these compressed air pistols came on the scene, we were shooting with a compressed uh, CO2 pistol. Carbon dioxide CO2 pistols had a lot of temperature fluctuations. And as a result, the shots used to, the trajectory used to vary. But compressed air is not like that. You see, from the cylinder, there a certain amount of air, compressed air, it goes into a chamber, which is the charging chamber. And when it goes in the charging, in the particular chamber, I'm calling it charging chamber, but it may be called something else. The pressure is maintained. The pressure is maintained and the same amount of pressure is used to propel the pellet through the barrel. Now when it, you know, there is a red mark and the pistol locks. The pistol will lock because when in that uh, chamber, it, uh, the, the pressure is not 100%. Okay, mm -hmm. then the pistol locks. So which means, technically it means that from 200 bar to 100 bar or whatever uh, uh, the point is, cutoff point is, the pistol, the pellet will be propelled through the barrel at almost the same speed. If you take a chrono, <clears throat> a chronometer and shoot the, you will get different velocities. You will get different velocities. You see, if it is a firearm bullet, Point to two or whatever. There is a slight fluctuation in, in in the powder that is put. In this case, there should not be any fluctuation. So where is the fluctuation? The fluctuation is in the pellet. Okay. Not each and every pellet weighs precisely the same. Those pellets which weigh precisely the same are costing higher. And the second thing is the skirt. You know, the rear part, the skirt of the pedal. Right. It okay. has to be perfect. And that is why hand-sorted pellets, the human eye can make out whether the pellet is, the skirt is perfectly spherical or not. Those, even if there is a slight unevenness, very slight. So when the air, when the barrel, when the pellet is emerging out of the barrel, the air which is supposed to be pushing the pellet perfectly, that area where it is less perfect, it, you know, it, it increases right. and pushes the pellet in a slightly different trajectory. And the trajectory right. is very slight because there is a rotation to it. Rotation. It's, it's rotating. So the trajectory is very, very different, but it does make a difference between a 9.9 .9 and a 10. It could make a difference. If the flaw is more, it will make a difference between a 9.9 .9 and a 10. .9. Right. But for you, it doesn't make any difference. <clears throat> right now, you you yeah. shouldn't be worried too much about that. Right. I, I hope I've answered your question. You you have you have. Thanks a lot. So so what I understood is when you when your air pressure drop below hundred, that's when you need to refill it. Obviously. Am, am I correct in oh, my yes. understanding? Oh yes, you have to. Okay. My second question is, uh, I have seen in your video, and I have also you know heard it from my fellow shooters or senior shooters, that yes, your and it is very common that you your arm, your wrist, your pistol, they should all be in the same line. So when you lift a pistol up, then, and that's, that's logical, right? Because you, you get a recoil, the recoil should pass in a linear way. Now, yes, absolutely. Now, now the point here is what I have noticed, and possibly it's a problem just with me. So I have a natural, when I, when I, when I lift my pistol up, then I have a natural arc of movement. If I do not, if I keep my eyes closed and just Pist lift my pistol up, then it goes to a certain point. It may not be pointing directly at the target, but it may be deflecting a little, you know, half an inch here and there. So if I lift my pistol up and then I am aiming, sometimes I see that my wrist is, or maybe my thumb or my wrist is slightly bent. It's, it's very, very minor, but I can notice it. So then I correct myself. I correct myself and then I aim and then I shoot. I, possibly I take my pistol down, aim again do the process again, then I shoot. Now, my question is, is there an exercise that will help me to do it automatically? Like yeah. My, my, yeah. Okay. That happens in model number three. And like I okay. told you, I think somebody I told, or maybe you, exercise one, standing line, sleeping line. So all those exercises, you know, you the gripping becomes uh, more and more uh, 
even. Even meaning right. the same from shot to shot. The same from one shot to shot. The gripping has to be even. Even means the same. Correct. So those exercises teach you, you don't have to do it consciously, it happens automatically. To right. keep the right. finger position, the three finger position, the grip position, and the wrist lock position, and to maintaining oh, wow. the grip pressure throughout. Okay? So these right. are the exercises that are given in, in the body when you come into training. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. What, one question that I have is, so sometimes when you take a shot and mm -hmm. when you pull the trigger, then your the, the three remaining fingers apart from your index <clears> finger <throat> should actually be relaxed or it shouldn't exert the same pressure as you're putting on your index. So your, yeah. Sorry, right. sir, please. No, no, complete. So, your, complete. so your, your trigger pressure should be independent of the rest of the fingers. Now, your trigger finger should be trigger independent. Trigger finger, yes. independent. So yeah. this movement should not create a movement here. Correct. And that will Correct. happen only through training. Now, right. I'm doing this much, but it is never this much. It is very, very small movement is there. But even then, Correct. because all the nerves... Uh, of the hand are all interconnected and they go through the wrist and that becomes very very challenging right very very challenging. so how to how to control <laughs> yes how, how to, control. to control that excellent through training and see one one more thing i will tell you mm -hmm. if you concentrate 100 percent on only one thing and which is the trigger pressure feeling before during and after the shot <laughs> you know, all your problems that's why i don't believe in this stupid diagnostic target Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. there's one diagnostic target which I like very much. And all those quadrants, uh, there's another one which uh, which is very abusive. It's funny. But uh, the other one is you're flinching, you're flinching, you're flinching, you're flinching, you're flinching, you're flinching, you're flinching. Mm -hmm. And flinching is the involuntary movement of any part of your hand, body, which results when the shot breaks. It's it's a, right. it's a reflex. It's just like you know, and you know. You correct, that. correct. Okay. Yeah, you, yeah. Right from your pupils, they they change. Your breathing mm -hmm. will stop. So various reactions are there, and all can be clubbed in flinching. Right. So, okay. To cure the flinching, there's only one thing. Please watch my video. What is a surprise shot? And right. You have to be so mentally focused in your surprise shot that. You're not even aware when the damn shot is gone. So when you are so deep, entire body from uh, your toes to your head to everything, mentally you're there. Oh, how there? I mean, I just gave you an example of my guru doing it. Correct. I, yep. I, I'll ask that boy to send me the photograph of those shots. But I saw it for myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I do achieve some of those things that she does, but never 10.9, 10.9. You can't become anybody's prestige. You've never done that shot in your life. Pick up and shoot. That's, a, that's, that's what I mean. When you are mentally focused 100%, then that's the holy grail. You know, that's right, it. Right. That's the end. The beginning and end of shooting. But to achieve that level, there is a systematic way of reaching that level. Right, right. Okay, thank you, sir. My, my last question is very related to what you just said right now. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, as you said, the international shooters or the top class shooters, so they they don't need to consciously aim. That's number one. I mean, their their practice is so, so hard and they have achieved a level where they get the aiming, the sighting. The muscle memory, as they call it, automatically, is not, which yeah. is not the correct term. There is no such thing as muscle memory. It's a beautiful term to use. Muscles don't have, see, memory is in the brain. Muscles don't have correct. brains. So it's not muscle memory. It is a function of the mind. Skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, fine. I mean, that that's a term that generally some people use. I've also yes, used it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, so my my point was so when I first started to, I mean, I will just provide an analogy here. So when I started driving, initially I was very conscious when I was braking and all, and then mm. after six months because I was driving every day, it became kind of passion for me. Then I was listening to music, and then I know that even if 
somebody comes in within four feet or within three feet of my car and I'm driving at, say, 60 kilometers per hour, I will be able to either deflect or break or save the person at least. And that has <clears> happened. That's, that happens very naturally. It, it's a very natural process for me right now. So that's what I was trying to, you know, trying to relate. Like how to, is it just practice or is it some kind of systematic practice or maybe I can follow some kind of module? Yeah. Systematic practice, that is where the mental shooting program is and that's where Jatin Goel, the gentleman who has just joined, who's experienced that. And Wonderful. you shoot from, okay. yeah, you shoot from the unconscious mind. I'll just get Jatin about. Please do. Please and do. And, yeah. and yeah. his experiences are phenomenal. And uh, to get into that unconscious level to perform brilliantly, you have to shut off your conscious mind. See, you are a right, computer right. background guy, okay? So the, yep. the, I'll tell you, the, uh, the mind is divided into two. It's there in my videos. Uh, one is the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious, okay? Right. Uh, the conscious mind is, you know, when you want to do a skill, you just concentrate and drill, drill, drill. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by drilling. Mm -hmm. And right. then, you see, what happens then there is a subconscious mind, which is like the uh, carbon paper between the page, you know, you, you're writing down something, you're writing Absolutely. down something, and when you take it out, and it has got the, the uh, duplicate. So the subcon <laughs> subconscious mind is that, it replicates, it is like the uh, random access memory, which is there for a little bit, <laughs> yeah, and, then yeah, yeah, yeah. and then disappears. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. but the read-only memory is the unconscious mind, which mm -hmm. is stored all your perfect shots, all your rubbish shots, and along with the visual images, there is an audio image. Or instead of audio image, I would say a sensory image. How you are mm -hmm. feeling when you picked up that pistol from A to B to C to follow through, all mm -hmm. that is recorded. And that is why to shoot and to tap into the unconscious mind, you have to be extremely relaxed. Right. And that is Agreed. why you should not ready to do any scoring because if you do any scoring, you are disturbed. You know, your, 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 your mind is on the uh, is it the uh, bottom line? I mean, now I have to shoot two, three more tens. If I have to shoot 95, if I don't shoot 95, then how will I become an international shooter? And then if I don't become an international shooter, then, uh, you know, what will I, sh what, what will be the face I will show to my parents and to my friends? See, this is the price tag which is attached. We attach it. Mm -hmm. You know, and true, that's what true, makes true. it so difficult. You, if you want to perform brilliantly, then you have to be a monk. Mm -hmm. You have to stop scoring. Okay, if you stop scoring, then uh, again, just check out the video, Mental Focus 2, 3, those videos and right. my YouTube. Right. Hey, you right. stop scoring, the entire fizz goes out of your system. The fizz in the soda bottle goes out. Right. right. The entire motivation will go out. So you have to find a different kind of motivation. You have to find perfection. You have to find joy mm -hmm. and perfection, which today's, today's shooters are not into that. And therefore, Very they will true. just remain there only. And then fade away. Like thousands before them, millions before them, and millions will follow after them. Right, right. This sport, is like, this, uh, this sport is like spirituality. It yep. is pure. Just focus. And it is like a Bhagavad Gita. You focus only on the karma that you're doing right now. Forget about the results. You, right. the moment you, just now someone said my mind goes into that is falki apiksha or that is expecting right. the fruit right. of your result of your karma that you are doing so the moment right. you start thinking you are 100% mental focus now is disturbed and then you shoot bad and then you feel even bad and then it becomes a vicious cycle Correct. <laughs> it's Correct. like the chakra view in which Abhimanyu gets caught in mm -hmm. understood sir thank you